Coming up on DTNS, Google's new pixels are high spec, but low price. Plus, who is Facebook's new portable smart display for? And a Fisher Price Bluetooth phone? This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, October 19th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. Also from Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. Also from not Los Angeles, I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. Uh, Sarah Lane is out for a couple of weeks, but we are very happy to have you along with us. Uh, we were just talking about movie premieres and salmon on Good Day Internet. If you'd like that wider conversation, become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS, where you can join our top patrons like John Atwood and Pat and DeGracia A. Daniels. Thank you all three uh, for being patrons of the very highest order. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. As we mentioned yesterday, macOS Monterey coming out Monday the 25th, and Apple just made the release candidate available in beta. One of the changes they made at the last minute, that tab design in Safari has reverted back to what it was in Big Sur. Ooh. So if you were worried about that, don't be. The default will be what you're used to. Everything's Nothing's going to change, Grandpa. If you want that new weird tab design, though, uh, that one that was in the Monterey beta through almost its entire run, you can still choose it, though. It'll be available in settings under Compact. This makes me happy. Alibaba unveiled the Yichian 710, a new 5 nanometer ARM server chip at its annual cloud summit in Hangzhou. The company plans to use its own data centers in the near future with no current plans to have it sold commercially. This is Alibaba's third semiconductor design since 2019. Netflix beat expectations for subscriber growth in Q3, gaining 4.38 million subscribers, reaching 213.6 million worldwide. Netflix had only expected to add about 3.5 million, so it beat it by a nice amount. Netflix expected to add 8.5 million subscribers in Q4. That's about the same as it added in Q4 last year. They always get a bump around the holidays. Part of the unexpected surge is attributable to the popularity of Squid Game, which Netflix confirmed in its earnings report has been viewed by 142 million households. It has been the number one program in 94 Netflix countries. I watched it. Amazon's self-driving car unit Zooks will begin testing a fleet of Toyota Highlander vehicles equipped with this autonomous system in Seattle. Now, Zook, uh, Zook, excuse me, currently tests vehicles in Las Vegas, San Francisco, and Foster City, California, but hopes the Seattle test will help it prepare the tech for a wider range of climates. Also, the news for most of us is Amazon has a self-driving car unit called exactly. Zooks. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and an exchange trade fund is a way to hold an investment in a thing without having to own the thing. So, for instance, gold. Uh, if you invest in a gold exchange traded fund, you get the benefit of the price of gold going up, if it does, uh, without having to have a vault <laughs> to store your gold in. Uh, the first exchange traded fund for Bitcoin launched on the New York Stock Exchange Tuesday under the stick ticker symbol BITO, B I T O. So if you want the thrill of rising and falling Bitcoin prices without having to actually buy and keep any of it in an actual Bitcoin wallet, now's your chance. For those who are into that sort of thing, it's worth pointing out that Bitto does not actually hold any Bitcoin itself, unlike the exchange trade funds, which usually do. Uh, it backs its exchange trade fund with Bitcoin futures contracts. That's the only way the SEC would approve it at this point. All right, let's talk about a new product, but not the Pixel. Hang in there. We're going to talk about the Pixel, but we got another new product on sale today, Lamar. Even more exciting. Facebook okay. introduced a mobile 10.1-inch smart display called the Facebook Portal Go. Like other portal devices, it works with Messenger and WhatsApp, has smart camera tracking to keep you in frame if you move around, and requires a Facebook account to use. Now, the Go has a gray fabric enclosure with rounded corners. There's a button to disable the camera and microphone, it's important. And there's a built-in slide-over cover for the camera as well. It's chunkier than a tablet, so it can sit upright on its own and has an integrated handle for carrying it around. Now, the big benefit is that it's mobile. It has a battery inside. The battery can be charged when sitting on a proprietary three-pin connector. It looks a little circular, like a little circular charging puck, if you want to visualize it. The battery gives you up to five hours of messenger calling or 14 hours of music playback. Otherwise, it works like other portals. Um, it is, uh, supports Amazon and Facebook's voice assistants, although they do different things. So you have to remember when to say, hey, Facebook, and when to call your good old Alex A friend there. Uh, 
and it has Bluetooth, so you can use it like a Bluetooth speaker as well. Does doesn't have many apps, but it does have Zoom. It does not have any video streaming services other than Facebook video. So the Porter Go is available now for one ninety nine. Go run out and get it this instant time. Hurry. <laughs> the problem the problem with the Portal Go is it's a Facebook Portal device. Otherwise, it's great. Uh, it's you know like the, the the big advantage here is like ooh a, a portable smart display. Some people might call that a tablet, but I think there is I think there is a justification to have a smart display that you can move around. A smart display with a battery in it. Sarah Lane always talks about when she first got her Echo Show. She wanted to pick it up and move it around and realized, mm -hmm. oh, wait, I have to plug it in. So so I think there's something to that. You may scoff uh, at it, but I think there's something to having that Bluetooth speaker ability, move it around, take it out in the backyard with you, et cetera. Unfortunately, Facebook was the first one to do this so far. Uh, and the Facebook portal yeah. is so limited. And it's from Facebook, which I know a lot of people just aren't, aren't into these days. Yeah, I, I was looking at the Engadget article, and it was like it listed pros and cons. And the cons were limited apps, like features, like other smart displays have, requires a Facebook account, and then the last con was Facebook. <laughs> so, yeah. so that the 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 fact that that's going to be a barrier for some. But I did see a comment on that article that was like, "Look, uh, I use WhatsApp. You know, I use yep. Facebook Messenger. And I, what can we safely say? Billions of people use WhatsApp. I feel I like you can. It, yeah, I, think I think you safely can. say that. Yeah, so." It might not be a product for us, but it might kill internationally. You know, and well, the fact that it can move around. It might I don't know. It might it might be a great thing. That that's the thing with the portal. I think Facebook could kill in the smart display market if they were running on Android. Just run this thing on Android, bring in a bunch of apps that that run on Google Home displays, Google Nest uh, home displays, um, and 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 just out compete. But because I, I mean, they may be running on Android, but because they, they have a be licensing too, because yeah. it's so proprietary, and you have to develop apps specifically for it, and the apps are very limited to Facebook's own ecosystem. I know what Facebook's saying. Facebook's saying, "Hey, it's a simple device for people who want to use Facebook on a display: WhatsApp, Messenger, make some calls to Grandma." Like, there is something to that simplicity, but it's just it's it's just too limited. Uh, it and and people, I don't know. People are into this for for lots of different reasons. I'm not trying to say the smart display uh, you know, has, has become a monolith and Facebook is missing the one thing, but this this just feels very limited right now. For 199 yeah. bucks, I don't know. I guess it's, it's subsidized not, it's not, to be cheap enough, maybe. Not a terrible device. I remember there was a, a, a portable speaker, like a Google Home, but we had batteries. I remember I showcased it a few years ago. So like yeah, they, yeah. Were trying, they were trying to do something like that. Like, so I think people, I think the idea of what you said, like a portable device is out there, people want it. Do they want it from Facebook? Well, time will tell. It will interesting yeah. to see how to sell, how if they will release the sales numbers on these. Put it this way: the portal is there is an audience for the portal, but I don't think making the portal mobile is the thing that will increase the audience significantly. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. A couple follow-ups to the Apple announcement from yesterday. First of all, uh, it's now confirmed that that HDMI port is HDMI 2.0, not 2.1, which could be the reason probably likely to be the reason that you see it saying it will only support a 4K display at 60 hertz, not 120 hertz. Not many monitors do that anyway, but it's kind of irksome. Uh, you can you can still get a 4K 120 hertz monitor to work on the Thunderbolt 4 ports. It's just the HDMI port that's uh, limited to 60 hertz. The 16-inch MacBook Pro also comes with a 140-watt charging brick with a MagSafe cable. And the best part about that is that it uses the USB-C power delivery 3.1 standard. So HDMI using the old standard, but USB-C using the most recent just-released power standard. And that means you could use it on other compatible devices. And the Mac can use compatible third-party USB-C PD 3.1 chargers from third parties. The new USB-C power delivery standard is the first to go over 100 watts. USB-C PD 3.1 goes up to 240 watts. The Mac power brick also uses gallium nitride, or GAN, which means it can be smaller than if it was made with other materials. They didn't seem to do that with the, the lower wattage ones. They're still making those with other materials, but this one's not as huge as it would be. Uh, a couple caveats. The 140-watt charger will only do fast charging on the 16-inch MacBook Pro's MagSafe port because the USB-C ports are Thunderbolt 4 and don't support USB-C PD 3.1. That's extra confusing because the 14-inch, not the 16-inch, but the 14-inch MacBook Pros can do fast charging over their Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports, 
because the 14 inch models come with either 67 or 96 watt chargers. And yes, you could get those lower chargers and use it on your 16 inch MacBook Pro, but it'll charge slower. And if your machine is pulling more wattage than the charger provides, because it can pull up to 140 watts, it could deplete your battery instead of charging it. Still, <laughs> if you want to buy one of Apple's 14 watt laptop chargers and not have to buy a 16 inch MacBook Pro, uh, you can get it for $99, but it does not come with a cable. Uh, you have to pay an extra $49 for the MagSafe cable. And uh, one more thing, Apple also added a new product to its catalog, the $19 piece of fabric called the polishing cloth, previously only sold with the XDR display. Uh, it's a microfiber cloth with an Apple logo embossed on it and supports most Apple products from iPhone 6 to newer. And you'll be happy to know that based on a, a ton of demand, I will be unboxing that in the future. Did you buy one? <laughs> yeah, really? I did. I did. You're going you're gonna to do an unboxing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm going to do a full, like, it's a series. I, I, yeah. I, was, I was asked to. I was like, all right. So, yeah, it comes out in November. Late November is when I'll get it. So. Yeah, the shipping times are slipping uh, for, for the for the cloth. Ars Technica yeah, she... put out an article literally like seriously addressing this, talking about, you know, it, it's listed on the uh, on the website as supporting iPhone 6, and later we cannot confirm that this cloth supports non-Apple gadgets like a Nintendo Switch. Uh, uh. So, so, the, so one thing I wanted to add about, because I wasn't you know, I was on the show yesterday, I, I came in the, into the Apple events like, I have everything I need. I just bought the... Um, the, the M1 in March, right? I bought a little late. Oh, you so bought the 13-inch, okay. Yeah, yeah, I bought the 13-inch. So I have everything I need. I'm fine. By the end of the event, I spent $4,000. Oh, no, you got <laughs> you got sucked into the vortex. I got, I got, the, those specs, you know, it just says someone who does video, those specs just just got to me. So, yeah, I got the 14-inch. I maxed out the memory, uh, two two terabytes storage. I don't need anything more than that. I did, and I just maxed out the processor, and, you know. Yeah, I got the max version. Of the pro, which is going to have a lot of people, you you know, there can be those prude people who are like, oh, excuse, I don't have a MacBook Pro, I have a MacBook Pro Max, you know, oh, excuse me, yeah, a MacBook yeah, correct. Pro, yeah, yeah, they're gonna, you know, they, yeah, they're gonna correct you. Yeah, I, mean, I'll do I, won't, that. I won't do that, but you might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the kind of person who would definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. uh, to you specifically. Uh, real, real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. Known Windows user Rob Dunwood, uh, off-time co-host on this show and uh, co-host of the Tech John, said on this week's the Tech John that he was really tempted by those chips. And he's looking at those prices going like, I know Apple's expensive, but for an equivalent machine, I mean, a Dell would cost you just about the same amount given that performance. So. I mean, that's that's you gotta you gotta listen. You gotta listen to the tech job to to win. Come on, Rob. That, come on over. Yeah, come on over, Rob. It's, it's good over here. <laughs> now, many of you may be familiar with the Fisher Price Chatter Telephone. Wait, what's that? You you're not? Oh no. Okay. Anyway, it's a kid's toy that looks like a phone with a big smiley face below a rotary dial, it has an old fashioned handset, and it's on wheels. And now it's available with Bluetooth. Wait, yep. what? <laughs> yep, yep, you heard me right, ladies and gentlemen. Fisher Price is putting out a version of the phone that can pair with Android and <laughs> I, I I kid you not. Uh, it can you can actually dial numbers with the rotary dial and hang up on ca calls by placing the receiver in the cradle. You can slam down on calls again. Oh my god, I'm excited about that. And you can hear calls over a speaker phone function. It's available for pre-order from Best Buy for $60. Although the shipping date is unclear, I do want to let you. You might want to hurry. I've already pre-ordered one because yeah, <laughs> I will be unboxing this too, ladies and gentlemen. I oh, could no. not resist. I could not. <laughs> I'm treating it like a full tech thing too. This, yeah. I, this, I need you to to bring over to my house. I got to see this in, in yes. real life. Uh, because man, that that's crazy. Uh, I mean, it's it's hilarious though. It's a nostalgia play. Which is yeah. uh, like perfect for millennials right now, and and basically all they did was they they put a Bluetooth speaker, like a Bluetooth phone device with a speaker inside yeah, the old toy. Right? But yeah, yeah. But, but but think about it. If your kid, like, if you want to talk to hey hey talk to grandma, go pick up, and the kid can pick it up, and you're just, it's like the speaker version. You're just kind of pushing it over by Bluetooth, so the kid on their Fisher Price. Can listen to grandma. No, you know what's going to happen is the kid's going to go over and try to start playing with this, and and the parent will be like, no, don't touch that. That, that costs sixty bucks. <laughs> That's my Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> yeah. Can't play with that. It's not a toy. <laughs> I, I also think it was it's hilarious that that we like. I think it's good that we're teaching the kids that rotary exists, but like 
they're gonna have no like this is it has no connection to anything in their yeah feet. i thought about that too yeah, yeah the fact that it's actually still rotary is hilarious it's kids are probably looking at this like what is, is this not, isn't a phone this, this looks nothing like a phone a phone is a black square it, you know <laughs> anyway uh, folks, if you would like to uh, hear more than just Rob Dunwood being tempted by Max, the Tech John podcast has some great content uh, about Facebook's metaverse uh, situation, uh, the the tech angle on the emails from John Gruden. Uh, you get all of that and more with Rob Dunwood, Terrence Gaines, and Stephanie Humphrey. You just heard Terrence on the show yesterday. Get more Terrence in your life. Get the Tech John taking a second look at the week's tech headlines delivered from an African-American perspective at the techjohn.com that's the tech j a w n .com all right let's get to those pixel announcements google announced new pixel phones specifically the 6.4 inch pixel 6 and the 6.7 inch pixel 6 pro both start at 128 gigs of storage you can get the 6 with 256 if you pay a little more and the pro with 256 and 512 the Pixel 6 has 8 gigs of RAM. The Pro 12, or I'm sorry, the Pro has 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, both new Pixels run on Google's own custom Tensor ARM-based system on a chip with the Tensor Security Core and the Titan M2 Security Chip, which handles your pins and passwords. The Tensor SOC has eight cores, two high-power cores, two mid-range cores, four low-power cores. While the Tensor SOC generally compared performance-wise in the presentation to the Qualcomm 888, uh, it does include Google's proven tensor processing unit for AI, and that TPU is is good. So, so machine learning and things like that are going to work very well on device on this. Pixel 6 has a 1080p screen with 90 hertz refresh rate. Camera has a 50 megapixel main sensor and a 12 megapixel ultrawide. Decent. Pixel 6 Pro, though, adds a 4x telephoto lens in addition to the regular and the ultra-wide and has a wider selfie camera plus a 1440p screen with an adaptive refresh rate up to 120 hertz. Both phones can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second with Google's auto HDR image processing or capture 240 frames per second slow-mo at 1080p. Camera works with the cool new machine learning software features like Magic Eraser, lets you take out objects out of the image. Uh, motion mode and face unblur that, that try to smooth out your images, especially in video. Both pixels have wireless charging, IP68 weather resistance, an in-screen optical fingerprint sensor, and fast charging. Uh, you don't get a charging wart in the box. You just get the USB-C cable. You have to buy a 30-watt charger separately if you don't have one already. And to tick all the other spec must-haves in a flagship, uh, both phones support 5G, Wi-Fi 6E, Ultra wideband, that's the, the find me thing like Apple uses with the AirTags, Bluetooth 5.2, and only the 6 Pro and a special version of the 6 for Verizon will support millimeter wave 5G. But battery life should be good on both 4,614 milliamp hour battery in the 6, 5,004 milliamp hour battery in the 6 Pro. And they ship with Android 12, of course, with a minimum five years of security support. Still talking three years of full OS, but five years of security because they made the chip. Side note, Android 12 now available for the Pixel 3 and up. If you have an older Pixel, you can get Android 12 now. Other brands will get it later this year. Pixel 6 comes in light blue, light pink, and black. They have fancy names for this stuff, but that's that's what they are to me. Uh, the Pro is available in off-white, a kind of a light yellow-pink combo, uh, and black. The phones are available for pre-order now with the Pixel 6 at $599 or $699 with more storage, and the Pro starting at $899 or $999 and $1,099 with more storage. All of them shipping starting October 28th, which is when they'll appear on store shelves as well. What do you think of the Pixels? Uh, well, a quick, I, I do have some thoughts. Quick question, though. The, this is their first year with the, because uh, I own the 4, not the 5. This is their first year with the their own chip, correct? Yes, the, the, that, uh, that is correct. Okay, I was wondering why they, they were making a big deal out of that. So, uh, I think, yeah, I think having their own chip is smart. It's what Apple's doing. Uh, so, I do have some notes. I think the camera bar is hideous. But it doesn't oh, mean yeah, it's got a big I, black bar across the, like all the way across the back, right? Yeah, doesn't mean I won't I won't like it. I just it's hideous to me. But someone pointed out on, on Twitter to me that once you put it in a case, the cases level out the make phone, so you won't yeah. so you make it flush, so you won't notice it. So I'm like, okay, that's fair. But that uh, it's ugly. Um, <laughs> uh, besides the, the specs and everything, sound amazing and great. I have again, I love. The Google's pure phones. I mean, I, I had the G1, I had Nexus One. I I, I love the pure phones, uh, but I'm really into their features. Real tone really stood out to me I was, as a person of color because they took the time to really address this in a kind of a raw way. 
that, you know, camera sensors, just by nature of the algorithm, how they're made, just tend to be biased towards towards white faces. And that that's that's not that's them saying it. That's not me making giving an opinion. So they they worked really hard to fix it. They worked with artists and 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 photographers and videographers and and to address you know this lighting image because I I've dealt with this having to take several shots or family who had the right light just to get a decent picture it doesn't look ashy. So I like that they're addressing it with the community. Uh, I, I feel that was important. Uh, the live translation to me was beautiful. I, I I'm not going to kid you, Tom. I almost teared up. I don't know why. It just it, it was it was beautiful seeing that interview, and I, I know it was a stage interview, but like just the fact that you can in almost real time have that translation back and not have someone have to feel like they got to change they got to change their language for you, but the fact that they can still speak their mother tongue and still be able to have a conversation with you through technology it doesn't matter who does it. I, I'm I'm just I'm really excited for that. I think that makes people want to communicate more. And I think, I don't know, it brings the world a little closer together. That's me being mushy, but I, I really I, I really enjoyed that live translation for sure. Yeah, Google seems confident it could sell a lot of these phones uh, mm -hmm. at, at these prices. These prices are, the uh, the biggest feature is the price. The fact that the these prices are, are so amazing. affordable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nikkei Asia's sources say Google has asked suppliers to produce more than 7 million units of the Pixel 6, double all of Google's smartphone shipments from last year. Let's talk a little more about those software features you were mentioning. Like you said, Realtone uses face detection to do a better job recognizing faces, reducing stray light that makes darker skin tones look ashy or washed out. Google says we worked with a diverse set of expert image makers and photographers to tune our auto white balance and auto exposure and stray light algorithms to ensure that Google's camera and imagery products work for everyone of every skin tone. And then regarding the translation, uh, there's a bunch of voice recognition improvements. The Pixel promises more accurate transcription. It can grab correct spelling from your contact list, guess where punctuation could be, do a little um, context-based spelling, like know when you're talking about a Catherine with a K, that it should always be spelled with a K. Uh, Staves active even when you're moving the cursor around. And like you said, it improved language translation, both from text, audio, and images. They showed off a real-time conversation with Marie Kondo speaking Japanese mm -hmm. and the person from Google speaking in English. And you could tell Marie Kondo, I mean, it's, it's a setup. It's a Google thing. Of course, she's sure. going to be impressed. She looks... E and I don't know, maybe Marie Kondo's a better actor than I thought, but she looked like seriously impressed, like kind of yeah. blown away impressed. Yeah. Uh, you uh, also have uh, hold time waiting uh, and screening calls like you do in Pixels already, but the new Pixel 6 can show you the phone tree options. So if it's giving you that press one to speak to a customer representative, press two to access your balance, it'll listen to all those and just put them on the screen. You tap the one you want and the phone will select it for you. So you don't have to sit there waiting uh, and listening. Snapchat's getting access to uh, native camera capabilities with something called Quick to Snap. That was interesting that they're partnering up with Snap so closely. You can add Quick to Snap to the home screen or double tap the back of the phone to launch the Snap camera without unlocking the phone. Google Snap users are getting exclusive AR filters and in-camera translation mm. uh, from that, that, that translation that we were talking about. Yeah, that one surprised uh, me. The Snap? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Snap surprised because I... It's not that I, I feel like Snap's going away, but like they, they just not in a conversation lately with things. So it, it, I would expect like a TikTok integration, but obviously they're a competitor in, in some video things. So yeah, so this yeah this makes sense. I had a passing thought that this is a way for Google to prove that it, it still works with companies even if it doesn't buy them. You know, good, like hey regulators, look at what we're doing with Snap. We didn't we didn't acquire them. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Mm. You know, I'm not saying that's the main motivation there, but it might be a nice side. It's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pixel also getting security and privacy features that are not yet available on other Android devices. A privacy dashboard lets you know what data apps have access to. Uh, info that was there, that is there in Android, but it's just easier to find and manage in this interface. New indicators will show up at the top of your screen if an app has an issue that needs attention. Uh, or just to let you know if the app is accessing things like your camera or your microphone. Google Ultra introduced a new Pixel Stand wireless charger with speeds up to 23 watts for comparable Pixel phones and up to 15 watts for other Qi certified devices. You can get that soon for 79 bucks. And I really think not only is the price the biggest advantage here, it's a great phone. I'm not, not trying to damn it with faint praise, but the Absolutely. price is its biggest feature considering what you get. And... Then they introduced Pixel Pass. All-in-one subscription service includes 
a Pixel 6 phone, along with preferred care, which is, you know, your extended warranty stuff, YouTube Premium, which takes the ads out of YouTube, includes YouTube Music, 200 mm -hmm. gigabytes of cloud storage from Google One, and Google Play Pass, which is giving you access to a bunch of apps without having to pay for them. $45 a month for the 6, $55 a month for the 6 Pro, over 24 months. So you're basically paying uh. off the phone and getting the subscriptions uh, for 24 months. So I, I really like the Pixel. I have at the Apple One, but it's not it's not like this. It doesn't it doesn't include the phone, of course. So so this this is a different deal. I was at first when I heard this because I on my Pixel is is Pixel is my second phone. I have Google Fi, so I pay I just pay the standard twenty bucks a month. If I thought Fi was included in this, I was literally going to switch over just for the heck of it. Because I'm like, you wow. can get you I, actually get a discount on Fi if you do this. Interesting. That's what I need to find out. I think it's like four or five dollars a month off your Fi, uh, okay. your Fi bill. Yeah. Because I'm already paying for YouTube Premium. I was just trying to see the things I paid for on Google. Yeah. Already, would it be worth it? You know, and and you get the new phone with it. And and I tend for pixels every two years anyway. I don't I don't usually do a pixel every year because it's not my main phone. So it's a yeah, it's a it, intriguing offer. I, I'm definitely gonna look more into it. Yeah, it is. Uh... I'm trying to find uh, the the savings. Yeah, you'll save an additional four dollars off your monthly Fi plan. Uh, so Pixel Pass would save you two hundred ninety four dollars over the course of two years if you were going to buy all this stuff anyway. Obviously, you're like, right. well, if I'm not going to buy a Pixel, it's not going to save me any money. But but if you were going to buy the Pixel and all this stuff, it's going to save you two hundred ninety four dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you get it through Google Fi, you're saving four hundred fourteen dollars over two years. Wow. Yeah. That almost feels like a no-brainer. Right, right I know there. it's a. It's, yeah. I'm I'm yeah. I'm absolutely expecting Apple to take its upgrade program and add it to Apple One and and, and combine mm -hmm. them. Like it, it yeah. would, this this definitely seems like a no-brainer. Like you said. All right, folks. If you're an American history buff with plans on visiting the Boston, Massachusetts area, Chris Christensen, the amateur traveler, has a great spot for your vacation itinerary. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another Tech in Travel Minute. Again, today I have a place for you, and this one is a place where the Industrial Revolution came to the U.S., or at least one of the National Historic Sites that is based on America's history in Industrial Revolution. It's also, as far as I know, the only park in the national park system that comes with earplugs, and that's the Lowell National Historic Site in Massachusetts. And the reason why it comes with earplugs is this still has working mills. And so you can see how these textile mills that were the first part of America's industry work. And it's a fascinating look into the early 1800s in the Industrial Revolution. It's just outside of Boston, so not hard to get to if you find yourself in that area. The Lowell National Historic Site. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. Yeah, a little tech, little tech history uh, spot to travel to. Thank you, Chris. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, let's see what's in the mailbag, Lamar. Yeah, so this is from Nick from Australia, and he says, Hi, Tom and Roger. I'm in a PC ecosystem, and I do not want a Mac laptop. <laughs> but I look at Apple products with lust in one area. I want MagSafe on a PC laptop. USB-C up till recently has been rather limited in its maximum power delivery. The PC industry has used the old barrel plug connectors and to deliver power to laptops that can easily go above 250 watts of power draw since USB-C is only good for lower power machines. But let's be honest, MagSafe is a much better connector. It aligns perfectly with near zero effort. It can deliver more power than the old USB-C standard. It will disconnect you if you are a klutz like me and trip over your power cable. I really wish Apple would open source or license MagSafe for that Asus G14 laptop I'm thinking about buying next week. I I agree with him. I think it should be oh. everywhere. Everybody should have it. As you as you heard, you can get that 240 <laughs> watt adapter, and it's standard, so you could use it with your non Apple device. And then there are things like Thunder Mag. Uh, out there, and I don't know if Thunder Mag's any good, but because uh, Steve Shanklet over at CNET had some problems with it, but there are definitely devices that will plug into your USB-C port on your Windows machine, and then give you a MagSafe-like experience. I don't know if any of them are any good though. So uh, if anybody knows, if anybody out there has said, "Oh yeah, I've got that for my Windows machine, and I like mine," email us uh, feedback 
at dailytechnewsshow.com. Help Nick out. Yes, help him. Also, help us out, folks. Uh, we are we are we are down a few patrons on the month. Uh, we have not had a new patron in a, in a few days here. So, if you've been on the fence out there thinking about joining the show, you get a weekly editor's desk from me. You get our rewind show where we look back at old stuff. You get Roger's columns. There's all kinds of cool extra content available at Patreon, and not the least of which, we'll make a big deal out of you when you join the show right here on this show. So go check it out, patreon.com slash DTNS. In the meantime, we're very appreciative of those people who have supported us at a high level for a long time. Special thanks to Ali Sanjabi, one of our top lifetime supporters for DTNS. We really, really, really appreciate Thank all you. those years of support, Ali. Boy, the people did, they wouldn't sit down for Ollie. That was, that was amazing. Yeah. Will, will you put that uh, on when you, when you mentioned me? When you, can you put the applause on? Because I, I need that validation. Thank you. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. No, okay. Look, if you need that validation too, just start supporting the show. Be a new supporter oh. and you'll get it tomorrow. Wow. Not, wow. not you, Lamar. Uh, <laughs> right? You get it right now. Uh, here's an example of what it'll feel like, folks. Hey, everybody. Thanks to Lamar Wilson for being on the show oh, today. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. I got uh, all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Lamar, what you got going on besides being tricked by uh, candy? Yeah, so I, I have I've been doing a lot of unboxings lately, either in gaming, tech, pop culture. So if you like any of that, just follow me at Lamar Wilson any, anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, soon to be Facebook or TikTok. I post the same content everywhere. So make it easy for you to find me any place that you are comfortable with at Lamar Wilson with two R's. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey folks, real quick. Our dear friend, my co-host, uh, Sarah Lane needs, uh, needs a little love today. So you, you don't have to lay it on thick, but you know, if, if you feel yeah. like it, a couple, a couple heart emojis wouldn't go astray, you know, at Sarah Lane, wherever you can find her. We are live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. (laughs) 